Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Revelation chapter 22, three times we read the words of Jesus, I am coming quickly. And the response of the believer is, Amen, come Lord Jesus. Here is the male quartet to sing, We'll soon be done. One of these days I'm going home Where no sorrows ever come We'll soon be done We'll soon be done With troubles and trials Troubles and trials Safe from heartaches, pain and care We shall all that glory share And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while We'll soon be done We'll soon Troubles and trials, troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side, on the other side. And I'm a gonna shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. Kindred and friends, now wait for me. Soon their faces I shall see We'll soon be done We'll soon be done With troubles and trials Troubles and trials Tis of home of life so fair And we'll all be gathered there And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while We'll soon be done We'll soon be done With troubles and trials Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. And I'm a gonna shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. I shall behold his blessed face. I shall feel his matchless grace. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials. Oh, what peace and joy sublime in that home of love divine. And I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. And I'm a gonna shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in Yes, in that home on the other side, on the other side, and I'm a going to shake that hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. The Bible has the answer. You have prevailed provided the questions and we search the scriptures in order to find the answers. Question number one, are we to lift our eyes to heaven or bow down in reverence? Here, an individual is asking the question, it seems that there are very different directions as far as a bodily position that we are to assume when we come before the Lord. Are we to look up are, are we to look down? Are we to open our eyes or are we to close our eyes? The individual did not give any specific scripture portions, but I can think of many which uh, come to mind. And let me mention to you just a few. In Psalm 95 and verse 6, it says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Then, in a very different directive, 
in Psalm 123 and verse 1, we have, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. And Jesus, in Luke chapter 21 and verse 28, said, When these things begin to take place, he is speaking of his own return, when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing nigh. Really, the most important part is not the position of the body, but the position of the heart. And in each of these, Psalm 95, Psalm 123, and here in Luke chapter 21, we have the position of the heart. And it is a heart of reverence before the Lord. It is a heart of hope and confidence in Him. And in the coming of Christ, it is not, oh no, here comes the Lord, I'm not ready. It is one of glad day, the blessed hope of the believer. And so really it's the position of the heart. And I want to take you to one other portion of scripture. In John chapter four, Jesus was meeting with a woman by the well in Samaria. And this is a very interesting question that the woman poses to Jesus. She says, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She was thinking, this guy really has insight and I have a question that I want to pose to somebody who has such knowledge. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain and you people, the Jews, say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship, that that's the right place. And the question that we have before us today is a question of bodily position, to look up, to look down, eyes open, eyes closed. Here this woman, she was really talking not so much about body position, but as body location, whether in Samaria or in Jerusalem. She was asking a geographical question, and they are somewhat related, I believe. And here's what Jesus says to the woman. Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Geography is not the most important point by any means, and body position is not the most important point either. You could have all the right motions and be in the right location, but your heart could be far from God. Your heart could be thinking of the baseball game or the golf game or who knows whatever else. Jesus says, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So bow down at times, lift your head, lift your eyes. At other times, close your eyes, but make sure that the heart, that the heart is right as you come before the Lord. Question number two, were there any female pastors in the New Testament? Let me begin this by saying that the New Testament, Jesus as well as the disciples and the apostles, as they grabbed a hold of what Jesus was really count, had really come to do, they gave an honor and a dignity to women which they had not known in the first century in the Jewish world or in the Gentile world. There were many women who, out of their own means, out of their own resources, supported Jesus in his ministry and followed after him. And successively in the New Testament, there were women who are, some of them named, some of them are anonymous, who were tremendously helpful in the proclamation of the gospel. However, having said that, there were no women who were identified as pastors 
in the New Testament. They were all men. Very recently, that some churches have taken it upon themselves to ordain women to the position of pastoring, but that is not supported within the pages of the New Testament. So the simple answer is to the question, are there, were there any female pastors in the New Testament? The answer is a simple no. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. We now have Tim Sturby coming to sing, Come, Come, Ye Saints, and that is followed by the male quartet singing, Peace Like a River. Love like a river, I've got 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 love like a
I would like to talk to you about Faith to Live By resources. Since the beginning of 2023, Faith to Live By has released five CD projects, and all of them are still available. Simply because we do not talk about them, we move on to another that has just been released. The others are yet available. At the beginning of 2023, we released Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, 13 duets and trios for your blessing. Then there was Tears Are a Language, God Understands, 14 songs of all of our singers, sometimes a solo or a duet, trio, quartet, or the full group. Also, there was A Closer Walk, the title song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. And that is also 14 songs by a mixture of various singers. And also, Gott ist die Liebe. It was 18 songs and scripture readings, all auf Deutsch. For those of you who enjoy hearing songs and scripture in the German language, or you also, you also many of you, requested one in order to give to someone nearby. And most recently, a CD, Sitting at the Feet of Jesus, from which all of the music in today's program is taken, 14 songs which feature the men of Faith to Live By. All of these five CDs are still available should you have heard about it and you thought, I want to get that, and you thought you missed your opportunity. All of these are still available. Our mailing address, where you may obtain these free and postage paid, our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C, 2H6, or you may call us toll free 1-833-367-3852. Also, our website, faithtoliveby.ca, is a means of you being in touch with us and letting us know of your request. And now, just before the message, the title song from our most recent CD, the men's quartet singing, Sitting at the Feet of Jesus.
We have been looking at the first letter of the Apostle Peter, the man who walked with Jesus, taken from the Sea of Galilee, in order that he might no longer be a fisher of fish, but that he might be a fisher of men. Peter speaks to some individuals who he writes to over the miles, and he addresses them as aliens, strangers in this world. They are scattered in various parts of the world. It's not that just one particular region believers are aliens, they are strangers, but all throughout the world. A key characteristic is that we are not of this world, even though we are yet in this world, until the Lord comes to take us home. And so the things of this world, they are not to permeate us. They are not to drag us down. They are not to weigh heavy upon us. The things of heaven, they are to be foremost in our thoughts and in our mind, in our affections, and in all that we do. I pick it up in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. The Peter has first of all said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has caused us to be born again. He has brought us up from the dead in verse 3. And then in verse 4, to obtain, to lay hold of an inheritance, imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved for you in heaven. It is an inheritance that is not of this world, and it is not of the characteristic of this world. It is something that is eternal. It is something that is reserved. It is on hold for us to enjoy throughout all eternity. But then it goes on. We have been born again. We have come into an inheritance. And what riches there is in that. What a privilege to be a part of an inheritance in this world. But soon the money is gone. Soon the treasures are all a thing of the past. They are memories. But not with God. We enter into an inheritance because we are children of the living God. And he also speaks, Peter speaks, we are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Peter, he is speaking to people who are hard pressed, who are oppressed, and he speaks to them about a protective power, the power of God that watches over them night and day. And Peter goes on to say, in this you greatly rejoice. Not just a little bit, you rejoice ever so greatly, even though, and Peter was a very realistic person, he knew what it was to be oppressed and to be persecuted, to be cast out and to be cast down in this world. He says, in this you greatly rejoice, even though... Now, for a little while, it never seems like it is a little while, but when you have the eternal perspective in your heart, it is just a little while. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. It was not the same for each and every one of them. There were different trials. Some of them were shared in common, but some were unique, but they were all trials. They were all difficulties, and they needed the Lord to watch over them. And Peter, he speaks words of comfort, and he says all of this, every bit of it, is so that the proof of your faith, the faith which is more precious than gold, even though gold is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though Peter is speaking to those who had not seen Jesus in the flesh, Peter himself, of course, had walked with Jesus for three full years. He had been there even when Jesus was crucified. He had been there on that glad morning when Jesus came and called them from the seashore to come and to enjoy a breakfast that he had prepared. But Peter speaks to these people 
they were hearing about Jesus and the glorious gospel secondhand through men like Peter. And Peter says to him, though you have not seen him, you love him. You really love him. And though you do not see him now, but you believe in him, you have heard his voice call out to you. You have, heard, you have felt his stirring in your heart. You know that his word speaks true. You know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And you have come to have confidence in that. So Peter says, though you have not seen him, yet your heart is drawn to him. You love him as though you were able to physically embrace him and that he was right before you. That is your faith. And though you do not see him now, but yet there is that confidence, there is that faith, there is that belief in him. And you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. And what comes out of all of this? Peter says, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Peter is speaking to people who were in difficult straits. Am I speaking to anyone who is in a difficult strait? Peter spoke to people who were in various trials. Do I speak to anyone who is in a various trial? Oh, I would want you to rejoice with joy inexpressible in the one who has brought you alive from the dead, who has given you an inheritance, who protects you moment by moment, and the one who speaks comfort, and the one who brings joy to the heart. Continue to look to him and to trust confidently in him, in what he has done and what he is yet doing in your heart. And may you know his blessing today. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 